So resale home inventory is really tight right now, and a lot of people are starting to think about buying a new construction home. I mean, you've seen all those model homes, and hey, what's not to like about getting a brand new home with all that cool stuff, right? New plumbing, new roof, new electrical, and nobody else has ever lived in that puppy. <laughs> Just makes you feel all warm and tingly inside. Well, buying a new construction home is really exciting, but there are still a couple things that you might want to know before you head into that model home center. So stay tuned, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Welcome back. If you haven't been here before, I'm Stephanie Frost, a real estate agent in Ocala, Florida, and I'm here every week to talk about all things real estate in the Ocala and Marion County area. So you're thinking to yourself about how nice it would be to buy a new construction home. You can practically smell that new home smell already, right? Well, before you head into that model home center, let me give you just a couple tips that you might want to know first. The first thing you really should do is to find a really good real estate agent that you can trust and take them with you from the very beginning. If you're just stopping in the model on a whim without your agent, and this is really important, make sure that you tell the sales agent that you have representation and write down the name of your agent on the contact form that they're going to give you to fill out. Otherwise, you won't have any representation on your side unless you pay your buyer's agent's commission out of pocket. Because once you've filled out that form, the builder will not pay your buyer's agent. You're going to be at their mercy. Now, 99% of all builders expect to pay a buyer's agent's commission, so they build that into their pricing. And now that I've said that, you're thinking, hmm, if they're factoring in paying my agent into their pricing, I can probably negotiate a lower price by going in with that representation, right? And not only is that a bad idea, the answer to the question is actually no, for reasons that we'll go into in a minute. So why is it such a bad idea to go into negotiations with a home builder without an agent to represent you? Well, first of all, think about all the people that you're going to be dealing with during the transaction. The builder's sales representative, the builder themselves, the builder's lender, and the builder's title company. Are you starting to see a pattern here? All those people represent or have a relationship with the builder. None of them are there to represent your best interests. Just saying. And this brings us back to what we were talking about earlier. You know, about how not having representation wouldn't actually mean that you could negotiate a lower purchase price. Well, the way that works is builders are usually really sticky about negotiating price. As in, they don't except sometimes when selling the last few homes in a subdivision and they're anxious to move the crews on to the next one. And the reason that they don't negotiate price is because they need to keep appraisal values up for any future home sales in the neighborhood. And home sale prices are a matter of public record, so everybody knows what they're selling for. So if you don't have an agent to represent you, the builder's going to be pretty happy about that because they get to pocket all that extra money and they'll have a little more leverage over you because you're not going to have anybody in your corner. Which is not to say that they won't negotiate at all. You just have to know how to ask and what to ask for. They may not negotiate on price, but most times a good agent can get them to throw in some pretty nice upgrades in order to get the deal done. Now that we got that out of the way, one of the things that you're going to want to ask is about any financial incentives that they may be offering if you use their lender and or their title company. Pretty much all major home builders will have their own preferred lender and title companies that they like you to use, mainly because they trust them and they get preferred service from them, and it just makes their end of the transaction go that much smoother. So they're usually willing to throw in a few incentives to the buyer just to encourage them to use their preferred companies. Things like paying part of the buyer's closing costs, or sometimes even all of it, or a credit at the design center. So just make sure to ask about what they're offering and make sure that you get it. Now, while we're on the subject of the design center, you gotta know that when you walk into that gorgeous model home, in this case, what you see is not what you get. Well, you could get it, but be prepared for a little sticker shock. Builders are trying to make a lasting impression on the people who visit their model homes, so they pretty much pack them with every upgrade they can stuff in there. And every single upgrade costs extra. And a lot of times it's a lot extra. I've seen upgrades that might add 50,000 or even 100,000 more to the base price of the home. 
So be sure to ask about what upgrades there are in the model and what actually comes in the base price home. Some of the upgrades you might see in a model home are probably going to be structural, like an island in the kitchen, a larger master bathroom, or a walk-in shower. But most are probably going to be cosmetic, like upgraded appliance packages, cabinets, upgraded hardware, upgraded carpet and tile, upgraded light fixtures, or even window treatments. Those gorgeous granite countertops? Probably an upgrade. Even when the builder offers granite countertops in the base price home, what you see in the model is usually a more expensive pattern. Plantation shutters are a big thing right now, and you'll see them in a lot of model homes too. But here again, they're almost always an upgrade. Even some paint colors are considered upgrades. So just make sure that you know exactly what you're getting in your home, as opposed to what you see in the model. Ask for a spec sheet, and if possible, ask to see the actual finishes and styles included in the base model home. If they don't have it on site, schedule a visit to the design center to see for yourself what they look and feel like. That way, you're going to know whether or not you'll be happy with it. And your agent can also help you decide what upgrades are worth paying for and which ones you could save a ton of money on by doing it yourself later. And I will definitely go over that in another video. Ask about the landscaping package that comes with the home. Some builders only include sod out to about 10 feet from the door, and some will sod the entire yard. Some include plantings, and some don't include anything at all. And don't forget about gutters, outside lighting and electrical, or sprinkler systems either. Now another thing you're going to want to know is about the community itself. What are their deed restrictions? Does it have a homeowners association? And if so, who's in charge of it? Make sure that you get a copy of any rules and restrictions so that you can make sure that you're 100% comfortable with them. Homeowners associations and deed restrictions can be a great thing for keeping the neighborhood looking nice and keeping home values up. But if they're too restricted for your taste, you need to know that before you buy a home in that community. You'll also want to know what warranties the builder offers on the home. There are usually two types of warranties on a new home. Most builders offer a one-year workmanship warranty that covers most things that could go wrong in the home, and a structural warranty that usually runs for about 10 years on the actual structure. But every builder warranty is different, so make sure that you know exactly what warranties your builder offers, and exactly what's covered, and how any repairs are going to be handled. And last on this list is to make sure that everything is in writing. A new home sales agent can tell you anything. But unless it's actually written into the contract, it doesn't count. So make sure that everything you've agreed on gets written into your sales contract. And be aware that the sales agent is only that, an agent for the builder. They can't actually promise you anything binding. So until the builder or their representative is signed, it's not a done deal. So there you go. Just a few of the many things that you need to know before signing on the dotted line for that new construction home. And trust me when I say that these were only the tip of the iceberg. And your best protection when buying a new construction home really is going to be to have a real estate advisor in your corner. But either way, hopefully I've given you a few things to think about before you go shopping for that new home. And if I have, or even if I haven't, feel free to like and subscribe because I do this every week and you don't want to miss anything.